Okay, so this video will be about the Eisenstein criterion, a theorem from 1850. I did not check this date, I will do it later. Okay, so the Eisenstein criterion, and of course this video is still on the ring of uh, polynomials. Okay, we are doing a series of videos on the factorization of uh, polynomials. Okay, and this is a very important uh, theorem about the, the factorization of polynomials. Let f of x be a polynomial a n x to the power of n plus a n minus 1 x to the power of n minus 1 plus etc plus a 0 all this in the polynomial ring okay, of integers. If there is a prime p, so this this p is a prime. If if there is a prime p such that p does not divide a n, so p does not divide this one, but p divides a n minus one and all the other coefficients. Okay, so it divides p divides a n minus 1, p divides a n minus 2, and p at the end, p divides a 0, 2. If, if this is the case for a prime p, and p squared does not divide this last one, that implies that f of x, this polynomial, is irreducible over the rationals. So basically you have a polynomial and then you find a prime p and you divide a p you divide a n by p and you check that p does not divide a n but p divides a n minus 1, a n minus 2, etc. till the last one. And p divides the last one. Okay. If this happens, and on the top of it, second condition, and this a0 divides p, but a0 does not divide p squared. Okay, if this happens then this polynomial is reducible over the rationals. Uh, it's quite easy. You look at the first coefficient and you immediately try to get some... You, you look at the first and the last one, okay, and you try to get some p. This is not... This is really a handy theorem. So this is such an important theorem that we cannot jump the proof. So we are going to get into the proof. Okay, so if the polynomial is reducible over the rationals, if this happens, we saw in a previous video, probably two videos ago, we, we saw a theorem that says over the rationals implies over the integers. So if you have a polynomial over the ring of polynomial and the uh, integer coefficients, if the polynomial is reducible over the rationals, then it is reducible over the integers. The proof is, is easy to. Okay, so if f of x, if our polynomial, this one where we are, the one where we are, uh, that we assumed, if this polynomial is uh, reducible over the rationals using this theorem, so there will be um, f of x will, can be factored into gx time, times hx, right, where g of x and h of x are in the, the ring of polynomials, okay? 
Okay, if a polynomial is reducible over the rationals, then there will be a g of x and h of x in the, the ring of polynomials that factors f of x. Um, and, of course, the degree of g of x uh, will be greater than 1, okay, to factor this. And the, the, uh, the degree of h of x, so it is g times h, okay, will be smaller than a given the, 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 the n. Okay, so the factor, the factor cannot be n, it has to be smaller than n. This is pretty obvious, okay? The degree of g of x it is, has to be greater or equal to 1, and h of x, or vice versa, okay? Okay, so let us say that gx is in the form of b r x r plus etc plus b0 and h of x equals c s x to the power of s plus etc plus c0 okay so do not forget that b divides a0 right but since we are factoring the polynomial f of x into g x h s so a of 0 the first coefficient will be equal to b naught times c naught right and do not forget that the prime squared does not divide a 0 so if pi squared does not divide a0, um, then p must divide, for instance, b0 um, but not uh, c0 or the other way around, or p does not divide b0 uh, but divide c0 so since this is true p will not be dividing one of them right okay without loss of generality let us pick one of them let us say p divides b0 and p does not divide c0 okay so without loss of without loss of generality we we keep on assuming this uh, hypothesis. Okay, so uh, so B does not divide a n by hypothesis. Okay, and a n equals B n times C n. Uh, uh, B not n. I have to call this one because a n it's b r times c s right so assuming this possibility so p does not divide uh, if p does not divide a n p will not divide one of these factors so it will not divide b r so there is going to be at least one integer at least one integer um, we have to call something to that integer let's call it t there will be uh, an integer t such that p is not going to divide b of t okay now let us pick this t and call a of t uh, we say this a of t is going to be bt times c0 plus bt minus 1 c1 plus etc at the end b0 coming from 
um, this one okay and uh, city okay so by assumption p divides by assumption p divides 80 so p divides 80 this is according to our choice of t right so every summoned here on the right here after this first one after the first one of course will be divisible by p so this one should divide p all this should divide divide p and all this should divide p so um but for p to divide for p to divide all these summons p should divide bt times c02 but this is Im impossible because uh, p is prime and does not divide either bt or c0 okay so this proves the theorem <laughs>